Good morning, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I have got a very exciting episode because this guy right here just happened to come into my shop late last night. It's currently about 4 a.m., but I couldn't really sleep. I couldn't wait to get this on video. This guy has got a couple really unique problems and I'd really like to capture them. So stay tuned, see how we fix the Skytron surgical table. The first symptom for the Skytron surgical table is that the AC plate was ripped out. But this guy has a common symptom that other Skytron tables have, and that is the table slide is a little stuttery. It shakes and it's slow. So we're gonna fix that today. We're gonna take a dive into the hydraulic system of this table. We're gonna change out this AC plate or repair the one. We gotta get inside it before we make that determination. And I'll take you on a walk through the hydraulic system so you know what's going on, what does what, and how to adjust it. And you too will be able to fix this problem and not call the vendor in. So stay tuned. We're gonna tear into it in just a moment. So the first step is to remove the perimeter screws on the cover. There's four of them. They're Phillips head screws, and I highly suggest using an impact. These screws have a tendency of getting goo juice in there and they're either rusted in or they're solidified because of the juice that's gotten in there. So use an impact, firm pressure, short pulses, they'll come right out. You can see that that screw is rusted, not in a good condition, but almost every surgical table is like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift off this cover. There's gonna be a connector right here to the motherboard. We're just gonna spread these ears, pull it right out. I'm gonna set the cover off to the side. Now here you have your main controller board and your battery backup system. And here's your hydraulic system. This is your main manifold, and these solenoids right here each control a separate function. Now these are bi-directional solenoids, so it'll click this way and then it'll click this way, and that'll send pressure to either this line or this line. And down here, you can see translucent covers on the ends of each one of these solenoids, and that is one way to find out which solenoid controls what function. So let's say I'm gonna do the table slide, which is the problem. You'll notice on this guy right here, first it's going to lock the brakes. Now if the brakes are locked, if you notice down here on this cap, I hope the camera will pick it up. Yeah, she's a little jittery. Now let's go over why this failure happens. One of the main reasons that we have this failure because of this hydraulic slide assembly right here. Now you can see some of the evidence right there. We have tape wrapped around. So when they're positioning a patient or they're taping down their drapes, they will always tape around the hydraulic cylinder. And here you can see the hydraulic cylinder that always gets tape on it. See this guy right here? That's your hydraulic shaft and that's the cylinder and the shaft is exposed and with no lubrication on this guy they'll just wrap tape right around it. You'll find tape right here at the bump stop or right here at the wiper. So the first step to this repair is to clean off that hydraulic shaft and you have to do that by unwrapping the tape, cleaning it off as best you can but you can't get to the other side because if it's truly stuttering really bad, this table isn't doing it very bad, but if it's truly doing it really bad, you first have to clean out the hydraulic block, which will open up the passage and allow the table to move. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna tear in the hydraulic system and take a look and see how contaminated it really is. This first hydraulic block right here is the one that controls table slide. And the way to find that is you hit the table slide buttons on the controller and you watch the little end caps. You'll see it'll get darker as the solenoid 
will move back and forth. So that's number one problem. Number two, you can see down here, the staff has yanked out the AC plate. And this one here, I can just repair. You see right there, it just needs a new lead soldered in. As long as they didn't pull it internally and destroy the internal connections. So I'm going to fish that guy out, which it looks to be right here. And it'll just get stripped back, retinned, and shrink tubed. So the hot wire here, you can see that it has become disconnected from the ACM plate. We're going to just strip it back. We're going to make sure that those conductors are really clean. I can see that they look like they're a little corroded at the end. Clean off this terminal, and then we're going to resolder it and then shrink tube it, and then screw it back in. No need to buy a whole assembly. We can just resolder the line straight to the AC in plate. And then also on the neutral line here, you can see that, see how it's really flimsy? That means that there's some broken conductors on this guy. So we're also going to pull that guy back, re-terminate the line, solder it back down, and we'll do that one too. First is going to be this hydraulic block. Now on these surgical tables, I like using this little craftsman kit. I also bought a metric Allen set to go along with it. I just throw it inside and close it up. This little craftsman set has this little offset wrench and a whole collection of different sockets and bits. So this is going to be the set that I'm going to use. One of the things you have to take note on is you're going to need a couple rags because this will make a mess. Along with having a good rag, I highly suggest using a plastic container because we are going to be disassembling the components from the block and we're gonna place them in this container right here so they don't get lost. We're gonna have tiny little stainless steel balls, springs, and uh, needle valves. So we need to keep all that set aside in a clean environment. Please use a plastic container if you do this. So the hydraulic assembly in question is this first one. I'm going to take my rag, shove it right up and under here as tight as I can get it. Put it right up next to the block because as I crack these open, there's going to be tiny little O-rings. They're going to shoot out because of the pressure and we're going to, we're going to save those O-rings. But we need to collect as much of this hydraulic oil as possible because we don't want that getting around the solenoids and down in the basin. First socket I'm going to use is an 8 millimeter. Just going to pop it over these caps, loosen them up. Oh, you can see the hydraulic oil shooting out, and you notice the O-ring right here is also kind of kicking out. And that's due to the pressure that's built up in the hydraulic system. I'm going to cram this rag in even further because next I'm going to take it off the plenum. Hopefully there's no pressure in these lines, just a little bit of seepage. Ow. Guys, do remember when you're tightening these down, they don't have to be tightened down that much. It is a hydraulic fitting, but the O-rings do their job. Modest pressure. Okay. So notice I'm not taking these uh, caps off all the way. I'll pull one out and show you guys what it looks like. Okay. So it's actually not a cap, it's a bolt. But it's a hollow bolt and the hydraulic fluid comes down through it and shoots out the side and it diverts uh, down the line. So these, they'll have an O-ring on the top and there's gonna be an O-ring on the bottom of this line. I generally try to keep them all together, just like this. When you lift them up, make sure that the O-ring that's on the bottom, you can see it right there. Make sure that the O-ring that's on the bottom doesn't stay on the block or get lost. Just, just lift it off as an assembly. There we go. 
and we got to clean up the remaining hydraulic oil. Now for the layout on these blocks, these flatheads right here, these I believe are poppet valves and uh, you have overpressure valves which are poppets and you have needle valves which are on the diagonals right here. These needle valves control the speed of the axis so if you tell it to slide this way by tightening these down you slow it down and by loosening them out you are actually making it go faster by giving it more hydraulic fluid. And then you've got two other I think check valves which are these tiny flatheads right here. So the first thing we got to do to remove this guy is this bolt and this bolt right here. And this guy is a 530 seconds. Okay. Notice I'm not removing them. I'm loosening them all the way up. That keeps the blocks in line because there's actually two blocks. The top is a brass block and down below it is a stainless steel block. And if I take one of these out, it'll allow the blocks to flop all over the place. So I keep them both in until they're ready to come out together. Set them in the tray. Now this block right here is the problem child. You can see on the bottom of it, you got two small O-rings and two medium sized O-rings. I clean as much hydraulic oil off it as possible. And I'm going to set this guy to the side because we're going to go ahead and pull him apart in just a moment and clean him out. You have two little pistons and a stainless steel sleeve block. Now I pull these out by putting pressure on the two ends of the pistons until I can get my fingers underneath them. You can see what the pistons look like right here. And if you don't grab them when you lift it up, they'll fall right out and maybe go underneath. And there's the next hour or so of your life trying to get those back out of the basin of this table. So be careful when you lift them up. I kind of pinch them together and lift the block up. Now this block here is not the problem child. I just clean the hydraulic oil off of it and then set it in the bin. Make sure that there's no lint or anything in there. And I set it in the bin with the two pistons. So I push the rag down in there, clean off as much hydraulic oil as possible. And you'll notice that there's two other O-rings in this bottom block. You're going to go ahead and leave those there. So what we have to do now is we're going to do a function check to make sure that none of these passages are clogged due to too much contamination in the hydraulic system. Because if there's anything in here, um, it'll just clog up your needle valve and you'll be back to tearing this apart all over again. So we're going to bleed it out a little bit with the remote. I always have to cover this. I'm going to put my hand inside this rag and show you guys just how much pressure comes out of here. So I'm going to elevate my hand over it just a little bit so that you can see because this will shoot all the way up to the ceiling if I let it. And I'm just going to tap the slide head. You can see it shot all the way up. And then I'm going to do the slide foot. I've got plenty of hydraulic pressure there. Clean up the little mess that I made. All right, so now this guy is completely taken apart as far down as I need to go. Next is to pull this guy apart and let's find out the, where the contamination's at. All right, so in the hydraulic block, there's these two large brass screws. We're gonna take them out and make sure you do this over the pan because there are lots of small components and if you lose something, say the little stainless steel check valve ball, then your table is not going to work and you'll have big problems. Mm. 
Okay. So here's the cap screws. You can see what they look like. It's just a little brass cap. And what it hides is this little poppet valve that has a spring that goes in the base. So you're going to keep that poppet valve. Make sure there's no debris down in the base. Keep it in its spring off to the side. This one looks pretty clean. I set them off to the side. All right. I can see some debris right there on this block all up in here. So the next is the needle valves themselves. I'll pull these two guys out. So these needle valves will almost definitely have to be cleaned off. You can see what it looks like right there. It's a very fine point of a needle. Just going to set it in the base. The contamination is almost always up there where the needle valve seats into the, its orifice. So let's pull apart the second needle valve. Yeah, I see some debris on, on the threads of this guy. And there's definitely some garbage down the hole. Next are the tiny stainless steel check valves. So these are the ones that have the little stainless steel balls. That's why we have to be very careful when we take it out. There you can see the spring and it's a little brass cap. And next is the stainless steel ball. You can see the tiny little ball right there. If it doesn't come out, just give it a good whack on the ground. It'll come right out. Either way, it has to come out because we're gonna clean this block out and we don't want anything plugging any of the orifice. And the very last thing that I'm going to do is we're going to pull these O-rings off. We're just going to set those in the bottom of the tray. There we go. Just like that, four O-rings. And that is a stripped down block. Now what we got to do is I'm going to first wash it out. Uh, I'm going to use soap and water and we're going to wash this out really good. And then I'm going to take it to the air supply, the med air, and I'm going to blow it all out. So each one of these channels is going to get blasted air down through it. And I'm going to reinspect it with a flashlight to make sure that all these little openings, I can see light through the other side, make sure there's no debris down in there, and then we'll put it back together. Once I've got the hydraulic control block cleaned, with soap and water, then I take it over, I blast it out with air, and once it's blasted out and I know that it's clean and it's inspected, then I'll take it over to the hot air station and I heat it up to 300 degrees and I evaporate all the extra moisture off of it because the last thing we want is moisture to get into our hydraulic system. If you get moisture in your hydraulic system, it can lead to contamination and it can lead to separation of oils and corrosion, of course. Now it's clean, it's dry, it's been inspected for any other debris through all the tiny little holes. Now we're going to reassemble it and we're going to start with the tiny stainless steel check valves. So first thing I'm going to do is drop the stainless steel ball down into its hole. And then you can see here, you see some of the debris that was contaminating it right here on this check valve. You see that? That tiny little piece of debris right there is all it takes 
to contaminate your hydraulic system and block one of these tiny, tiny little needle valves. So the stainless steel ball's in its hole. I've inspected its cap screw. It's clean. I'm going to reinsert and tighten it back down. It doesn't have to get tightened down very tight. It's got that O-ring that keeps its place. Next ball. So the next thing I'm going to put in are the needle valves themselves. Now these guys are the ones that get clogged up, so I'm going to inspect them really good to make sure that there's no contamination. And then I'm going to put them back in their hole. Now needle valves will get tightened almost all the way back down and then loosen the back up. That's all the way down. It's fully occluded. Now we're going to open it up. just a little bit. Second needle valve. There's some contamination on it. I can see it right here against the base collar. That's all it takes to clean it out. It's just a little bit of air. Looks good. Now it goes in its hole. Now we'll adjust this after it's all assembled to make sure that we get the throttle just correct. The next are these poppet valves. Put them and their spring down in their hole. You're going to take their cap and screw down their cap. Notice I'm not holding on this very tight when I'm tightening them down. That way there, when it reaches its max torque, it just twists in my hand. It gives me a little tactile indicator that it's tight. There we go. So the very last and the most important part is going to be these O-rings. Make sure you have four of them. Put them back in their holes of their size. There you go. So that's a completed block. Now we're going to go back and put it back in the table. I'm going to take a clean paper towel. I'm going to press it down on the top of this base block here. Make sure that there's no debris and make sure that those O-rings are well seated. And then I'm going to take the stainless steel block with the two pistons. Remember to hold those pistons as you put them down. Next, I'm going to take our fully assembled hydraulic control block. I'm going to put it down where it needs to go. It should go diagonally. Notice the direction of all the um, th notice the direction of all the needle screws of the other blocks. Two bolts. I'm going to finger tighten them, make sure that you're not cross threading. And you notice some hydraulic oil popping up over here on the plenum. Going to make sure that that's cleaned up nice. And now we've got our assemblies. We're going to pop them back over to where they belong. There we go. Notice I'm just tightening these with my finger. That way there I know that these all seat nice and positively before I tighten these two down. See how the block can move around a little bit? 
that makes sure that I'm not straining these tubes when I go to put them in. The very next thing is to tighten down these two. Notice how I'm working them back and forth. I'm not tightening one down, which will bind it. You want even pressure on those hydraulic O-rings. Make sure it seats nice and firmly. Now I'm not really forcing it. I'm just giving it just a little positive click. Next are going to be the eight millimeters. Tighten down one end. Go to the plenum, tighten down the other end. Right, and there we have it. Clean up the excess hydraulic oil. Now we're gonna bleed out the air system by running it all the way to the end of its movement and then let it sit there for a moment and then run it all the way to the other end of its movement and let it sit there with the hydraulic pump running. Now the way this hydraulic system works is when it reaches the end of its movement, this right here is gonna divert the excess over pressure back into the reservoir. So underneath this cap right here is gonna be a screw that you can tension down to adjust the overall pressure that's at the termination of your movement. Don't touch it if you don't have to. That's your diverter for excess pressure. All right, now we're going to go ahead and test it. We're gonna slide it all the way from one side to the other, and we're gonna look for leaks around these fittings and in between the blocks. Table sliding nice and smooth now. You can see that hydraulic shaft right back there that I was talking about. You'll see debris of some tape up here around the wiper. This one's running pretty good. Very smooth. Both directions now because we cleaned out the debris. Now while you're down here, there's gonna be a couple other fittings that you're gonna to have to check. One of them is this piece right here. It tends to get loose. There's two fasteners, one right here and one right here. Make sure they're tight. And if they're not tight, put some Loctite on them and put them back in the hole. The other one, the other fitting that we have to keep our eyes on, especially during PM time, is this block right here that connects to the other end of your slide hydraulics. Same thing, make sure that they're not loose. This one here seems to be pretty good. The way I usually test them is I will rock the table back and forth and you will see it rocking. This one's good. Nice and smooth. Now that the table slide is fixed, you're gonna notice up here is these dovetail rails. I'm gonna go ahead and take some high viscosity grease and put a really thin layer on both sides of these dovetails. That way there is nice and lubricated because fluids will get up here and they will rust. And when they rust, that puts extra wear and tear on your bearings. While we're down here, I'm gonna make sure that this is clean, those are tight, make sure that there's some light lubrication on those rails. And then this table is good to go for the hydraulic slide. My second repair for this table is gonna be our AC in plate right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and strip back. Oh, look at that. No pressure whatsoever, it broke right off. Well, it's good to know. Check my ground, my ground's okay. So normally for this, you're gonna need a pair of flush cutters and a pair of wire strippers and also some shrink tube. Go ahead and strip back these wires. It's going to be a little extra tough because at the very end of the wire there is some solder and that's going to make it hard to pull the jacket off this wire. 
There we go. There's one. All right, there's two. Cool. I'm going to give these wires a good twist to make sure I got all the conductors together. And we're going to retin them. Notice how after I know that I've got a decent amount of solder on the wire, I slowly pull the soldering iron away from the wire, just like that. And what it does is it leaves a nice big solder ball on the end of the wire. That will allow me to quickly attach the wire to these terminals because you don't want to heat it up too much since it's in a plastic composite. Right now I'm cleaning off the old terminals put my soldering iron on until it gets really warm and then just drag it off and that little jerk cleans off the debris that was on there and we're good to go. I'm going to place the new shrink tube on the wire, line it up to the terminal and melt it on. Just like that too easy. Put a shrink tube down over the terminal and we'll do the second one. Put the shrink tube on the second wire. I'm gonna line the wire up to its terminal. Melt it down. and I hold it in place until it hardens. And then move the shrink tube down. The next step is to shrink these guys down. Yes, I am using a torch, but notice how I keep moving it so that I don't put too much heat on it. Just make the shrink tube nice and soft and then push them down on the terminal block as far as possible. And there we go. This is dual layer shrink tube, so it'll give the wires some extra support that they didn't have before because the glue that seals around the wire will also harden a little bit. So it won't give it that flex point right at the terminal like it had last time. I'm gonna go ahead and feed those wires back in. And now I just have to screw down the AC plate and we're good. Now that the AC plate's completed, I did an electrical safety check on the table, which is possibly the most important part of this whole repair. Next, I'm going to go ahead and reattach the cover. There's a little indexing mark on this connector. Just pop it in the right way. Press the ears down to lock them. Notice how I'm pushing the cable back so that it's behind the lip of the table. firmly seated. Now we put the four screws in the perimeter and we test all the functions of the table and we give it back to the customer. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you like this video. You too can fix your Skytron tables. Don't pay somebody to do it.